You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey there everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. Uh, okay, let me... How do I delete the... Uh... Okay. There we go. Alright, guys, I deleted that creepy save. There you go, and you watched it. <laughs> no more evil. <laughs> Alright guys, but last place we left off, we had that kind of eye-catching thumbnail with Lei wearing that crazy outfit. I mean, it looked good on him, showed off some of his finer assets. But anyway guys, let's jump right back into it and see just where this silly crazy day takes us, shall we? Alright, alarm chin, you're up, and here we go. <clears throat> on one side sits Oscar and Lei, the two largest guys in the group, though Oscar dwarfs even Lei in sheer size. Despite not getting along, Lei approves of the idea. He's probably happy that Oscar isn't sitting with Lucas or myself. There's no complaints from the other otter at all, and there's too much for him to enjoy regardless of where he sits. Lucas looks relieved to not have to sit next to him, and there's a part of me that feels bad for Oscar. He's constantly being put on trial, and I'm almost certain he doesn't mean any harm. Our side of the table hasn't changed since we first got into our seats. Lily is still next to the wall, and Lucas is sitting at the open end of the booth. Without any shuffling on our part to worry about, it became easier to focus on other things such as Lucas not so suddenly watching Lay sliding into the booth. Looks like Oscar was right about that after all. He caught me he caught me watching him and immediately sat up straighter, trying to adjust his already neat and tidy outfit. Thankfully he doesn't reach up and rip at his head again. By the time we all get settled in, Lucas's ears were burning pink and Oscar's smirk had grown into a full fledged grin. There's an awkward silence between the group, but before I can consider breaking it, Lily clears her throat. Our attention turns to her, and she flashes a soft smile on her face. There isn't a single sign of discomfort or nervousness in her expression. Thanks for coming! Sorry sorry for asking this on such short notice. I thought it would be good to get together again to check on Wallace and work on our project some more. Not even a second after she finishes speaking, all eyes shift towards me, concern and curiosity mixing together in everyone's eyes. Unlike Lily, I don't have the composure to handle nearly half a dozen people staring at me, so I stare towards the table, hoping that it will magically make this conversation be over. Everyone's waiting for an answer, though, and it's unfair to keep them worrying. I'm doing fine. I was... it was really just a bad dream that left me a little bit shook up. I'm feeling a lot better after a good night's sleep. Knowing that there might still be doubt, I look up towards the group and give them as authentic a smile as I can, the edges trembling lightly, slightly. Not from any problems, mind you, just the attention is causing a swell of anxiety in my chest. Is that a uh, fourth wall break right there? <laughs> After a moment, most of the occupants relax. Lily Lay continues to stare towards me, his green eyes still bursting with worry, but he doesn't press any further. At times like this, it's a blessing that he's so much more quiet than the rest of our group. Okay, so Lay is going to be in the next run, and, uh... God, what's the... Cute, wolf, cute fox guy's name. What's his name? God, I'm sorry. Forget it, guys. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me after yesterday. I'd be surprised if Wallace could even remember what happened instead of what we, instead of what we did. It caused me to balk and frantically look towards the otter. The only thing awaiting me is his knowing expression. I don't even need the burning sensation in my ears to know that they just they, they must be beat red. <laughs> Jesus, Oscar. Lay's stoic expression breaks into a look I can only describe as offended. His brows are creased and his mouth is barely hanging open, completely shocked that he said that. The only response he gets is Oscar looking over at him with an innocent look. What? I only wanted to give Wallace a good time. <sighs> Sorry. Hey, Oscar, your voice. It's so different now. <laughs> what? I only wanted to give Wallace a good time. That's not the point. Lucas, there we go. That's kind of the point. It's the reason one of us took care of Wallace, after all. Lucas's judgmental tone is jarring compared to Oscar's sultry one. What the fox did say, however, is much more confusing. Even Oscar looks surprised even before an even wider grin crosses his face. Are you saying you wanted to make sure Wallace had a great time? Make sure he was satisfied? Lily's chuckle is quiet, and I can barely hear it as she muffles it with her hand. Lay, on the other hand, looks ready to interrupt and put a stop to where this is going before he's cut off by Lucas. Obviously, we all wanted to. We would have done it all together if we could. <laughs> Lucas, I don't understand. I don't think you understand what you just said. <laughs> oh my god, so funny. I love the way he said that. That was just too perfect. 
That breaks Lily and her giggle transforms into full-blown laughter. Asha quickly joins her as Lay's entire body sags, unclear if he's disappointed or just exhausted. As for myself, I can feel myself looking towards the wall as my ears burn. It's at times like this that really make me curse having white fur. Any flushing is easily seen through the almost, the almost transparent cheek fluff. The confused expression on Lucas's face shows that he's been he's being completely left in the dark. Opening my mouth to explain it, a glare from Lay makes me stop in my tracks. Looks like he doesn't want to give Oscar the satisfaction of corrupting Lucas's innocence. Instead, I just place a hand on his arm, rubbing it slowly in a reassuring way. Looking towards me, confusion is still evident in his expression as his ears droop and press against his head. Don't worry about it, he's just teasing you. Oh. Oh. I mean, nothing bad by it, man. Just didn't think he'd respond like that. Oscar's response is barely recognizable when each word comes out between a laugh and between a laugh and between a laugh and regardless of its sincerity, it's hard to take seriously with that grin on his face, tears in his eyes. Just ignore him. Lay, did you have anything you wanted to talk about? Despite the annoyed tone in his words, Lay's pressing his lips together as if holding back a smile of his own. Looks like Oscar's antics even have an effect on Lay. Not that he would ever admit to it or give him the satisfaction. He'd never live that one down. Looking back towards Lucas, his expression has changed from downtrodden to bashful. His inner ears have become a deeper shade of pink. He's playing with them as he looks down towards the table. When my attention is drawn to a feminine figure approaching our table, coming right up to the edge of our booth with a demeanor so bubbly, I wouldn't have guessed she, I would have I would have wouldn't have guessed she was working as a waiter. Welcome to Snapping Jaws. We hope you enjoy your stay. We have a board above the bar with all of today's lunch specials. Would any of you like something to drink while you decide on your order? Hmm. <laughs> Oscar perks up at the side of the young waitress, a tall and lithe lioness with soft features. She looks to be in her mid-twenties. The most striking thing about her is the numerous fish on her uniform, a colorful rainbow of fish swimming around, this, around her sea blue skirt. <laughs> Can I have a beer? Ow! Hey! Oscar leans away from Lay with a face closely resembling a hurt puppy. Lay doesn't look like he's buying it at all, his eyes squinting with suspicion. He doesn't look angry or annoyed, though, merely scolding like a parent would try their misbehaving child. It's lunchtime. No alcohol. Water for me. Jesus, man, fine. It's ginger beer, then. Oh, God, ginger beer? Oh, man. Oh, that is definitely an acquired taste. Okay, so, tiny little story time. I have no idea what ginger beer, what a ginger beer tasted like, and one day, when I was very, very thirsty, I bought one at a store, and I opened that thing up and took a big swig of it, and my God, did I have to struggle to keep that down. My throat and mouth were burning like crazy. I was like, what is this horrible thing? It's like drinking fire. And that's the day Neri learned what ginger beer was. Oh, can I please have pink lemonade? I saw you guys did them earlier and they look super cute. Actually, bring me two. They won't last very long. Lily's eager tone is a great way to diffuse the awkward tension and I can feel like Lucas relax next to me. I didn't realize how tightly he's been wound up. Actually, now that I think about it, he did sit straighter as soon as, he sh as she came up, uh, up to our table. It's as if he's rebuilding his walls to block out any strangers like he did when I met him in class. I wanted to relieve as much tension as I can. I press my shoulder against him. He hesitates for a moment before leaning into my touch, and it's shocking just how fast he relaxes against me. That hardened expression melts away as quick as it came, and he even manages to bring a smile to his face. While his usual scowl fits him well, it's nice to see him with a smile every now and then. <laughs> Thanks. It's a quiet whisper that I'm sure no one besides Lily and myself can hear. There's a happy hum coming from next to me, and I don't even need to look towards her to know that Lily's eavesdropping on us. Don't worry. Just order what you like. She won't bite. I know she won't. I'm not a child. Despite his words, his body screams uncertainty, and he looks towards the waitress, the waitress whose smile has grown tighter than it, had before, than, it had been, than it had been when she first arrived. She likely didn't expect ordering drinks to take this long. A root beer float. You do those, right? I saw some kids drinking some earlier. There's a firmness in Lucas's eyes, an unflinching glare that almost feels like a challenge, like he's daring her to say something. I know it's not how Lucas really feels, but it's just so, its just how he comes across. So very hostile. She raises an eyebrow at that, but only smiles and writes it down. With each tap of pen on paper, I can feel Lucas's muscles relaxing. And I'll have a Coke. Cutting in as soon as she finishes writing it down, she gives a big, she gives me a big smile that someone took the initiative to speed this up. Uh, let me redo that, guys. I'm sorry if my sentences are being broken up. I kind of just got up. <clears throat> Cutting in as soon as she finishes writing it down, she gives me a big smile that someone took the initiative to speed this up, but I did it just so she'll leave sooner. I think her presence is stressing Lucas out. Great! We'll get these out to you right away, and we'll take your order then. 
Thank you for coming to the Snapping Jaws. And with that, she moves away from our table with a skip in her step that I can only assume comes from finally being able to escape our table. The feeling's mutual, even if she wasn't a bad person. Well, she's busy. With her gone, I lean over Lucas. I lean, against, uh, I lean over against Lucas, whispering in his ear quiet enough that I'm sure only Lily can pick up. It's free real estate. I can't help it! These games keep doing this to me! Everyone keeps whispering in someone's ear in, like, almost every VN I play. You doing okay? You looked a bit out of it there. Yeah, I just get scared when I talk to someone I don't know. I have problems with people. Not bothering to keep his voice down, Lucas's reply is loud enough for the rest of the table to hear it with ease. Lay replies before I can. His voice is filled with the warmth that can only come from someone who takes care of a sibling. It's okay to be scared of people. I know a lot of people who have trouble talking to people. Yeah, my, well, my best friend gets real bad around people. He's mute and gets extremely shy around everyone else. Around anyone else. Sometimes he freezes up entirely. Oscar cuts in with an, with an upbeat tune, trying to brighten the mood even if the content doesn't match the tone of his voice. Lucas looks at everyone with a confused expression like he didn't understand why everyone's talking the way they are. He opens his mouth to say something before shaking his head and his, natu and his neutral expression returns, aloof and cold. <laughs> oh god, that's a big yawn. Mm. Your friend's mute. And just like that, all the attention shifts towards Oscar, and the otter looks more than happy to take all of it. Yeah, when we first met, he couldn't speak to anyone on the swim team. He caused some problems with the coach, but I gave him a hand, and now we're chill. He can whisper into my ear now. It helps a lot. He's a great guy. You guys would love him. Lily well, looks ecstatic at that, leaning forward across the table with bright eyes. She looks so excited to make as many friends as she can, like she can't have enough. Ah, uh, yes. Another gay guy to add to her collection. We're so different in that regard. This group are my only friends, and we've only been together a few days. I'm startled out of my thoughts by a sudden warmth on my left hand. It's got another hand laying on top of it, a very large one covered in light brown fur. <laughs> We're all friends here. All of us. Don't stress about the details, man. I'm shocked at just how big this guy, how this guy, I'm shocked at just how this guy, this hot and funny guy, could be so perceptive. How could he not only see something's on my mind, but know exactly what it is? He wraps his thumb across my wrist. Despite how gentle he's resting his hand, I can feel the strength he has, and it causes me to shiver. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Lay looking towards Oscar with a suspicious glare, but it's less pronounced than before. Lily has a smile on her face that she's hiding behind her hand, and Lucas is only focused on our hands, eyebrows furrowed and head tilted. I wonder what's going on in their heads, what they're thinking all of all this. He pulls his hand away. He pulls his hand away, but he lets his claws playfully trail down the gaps between my fingers, smile widening when I jerk my hand away from his, out of reflex. Even without feeling the burn, I know my ears are flushed and my face isn't too far behind it. I expect him to continue, but he's still looking at me as if he's waiting for something, some response from me. All I'm able to do is give him a nod, the only act I'm capable of in my breathless state, something to let him know I'm okay. Because it's true. I am okay, or at least I'm doing better. I have friends and they care about me. Sure, they're new and I've only known them for a couple of days, but they're the closest of friends I've had for a long time. So, I think we should carry on looking into what happened to Helena. Lily's voice pierces through, it pierces through everything, but it's kind and gentle, like it doesn't want to disturb the, this peace between us, the sincerity, but has to. We all look towards her, surprised edged onto the other's faces, probably my own as well. I have to completely twist myself to look at her. She only smiles back at us in return, unaffected by the confusion emanating from us. I've been thinking about it, and I contacted our professor about the labs. He said as long as we can provide weekly reports and we can leave our Thursday class early if something happens to one of us, if things get too hard. She's looking towards Lucas with a sympathetic glance, her eyes softer than I've ever seen someone's eyes being. It reminds me of a new mother doting on her newborn baby. But under the table, she gives my leg a gentle squeeze. It's not suggestive by any means. It's comforting, as if the words are meant for me, too. At this moment, I can't help but see Marcus and her. They're different, and he never showed this level of affection, but I know he cared about me more than he did about anyone else. Is seeing him and her? It's bittersweet. So, as I was saying, let's do some research on it today. There's a shuffling behind me, and then, without a hint of shame, Lucas places his head on my shoulder. The warmth is a sudden shock, but I can't let myself get too startled. That will scare Lucas off. Oscar is waggling his eyebrows obscenely towards us, but I'm going to just ignore him, as much as I can, as much as I consciously can, because I can still feel the heat in my face and ears, worsening whenever I feel Lucas's fur brush against the skin of my neck. We can go to the library. I know my way around there pretty well. 
I, can, I can't see his expression, but the excitement in his voice is so thoroughly charged up that I can't help but imagine his eyes wide and a little smile on his face, even if such a smile doesn't fit what I've seen of him. Lily only giggles in response, incredibly amused about something, and I really hope it's how cute Lucas is being and not the amount I must be blushing. That's the idea! We'll go to the library and do some research together! Will we find anything? What do you mean? This was a murder, not a historic event. We won't find any books on it. Yeah, but there's computers living in the library for students to access in there. That seems like the smartest place to do it. I don't think any of us has a space at our place for all of us to crowd in. I know I don't. Even without a roommate, my room is still significantly smaller than any other place I've stayed before this. Heh, <laughs> didn't even know the library had computers in it. The smile drops off Lily's face and she looks over towards Oscar with a confused expression, the rest of us following suit. Aren't you a senior? Yeah, that doesn't mean I use the library much. I've only gone there a few times. That doesn't surprise me. You don't exactly strike me as the kind of guy that reads a book that's not porn. See, this guy gets it. Oh god, Oscar. There's a bristling of fur against my neck as Lucas tenses up. Something about that exchange must have made him uncomfortable because he shifts away from me. Oscar, I've been curious about what you're... But what is your major? Accounting. I'm doing a Bachelor's of Commerce. I got offered a full-ride scholarship if I went into law, but then I wouldn't have time to swim, and I'm not down for that. That stuns the whole table back into silence. With the attention now on Oscar, I'm able to, for I'm able to face forward and see everyone once more. Lay looks the most surprised. His stoic mask is nowhere to be seen as his eyes are wider than I thought possible. Everyone looks absolutely dumbfounded. How did someone as dumb as you get offered a scholarship? For going into law, no less. Right? I just want to swim. I need to complicate it with such a demanding major. Accounting isn't exactly a walk in the park, either. That's still a serious curriculum. Not even remotely on the same level as law, but you can't just sleep your way through that. Everyone's surprised at Oscar's declaration. Even Lay's still completely stunned into silence at the news, but no one's asking the most important question. Why did you pick in accounting instead of something less demanding? I had to cut myself off from saying anything specific and potentially pissing someone off. I need to insult someone's possible major. <laughs> I thought it would be a good degree if I need to get a proper job. I don't really care about accounting, but man, as long as I can swim, I don't care what I'm doing, you get? There's something off about the way Oscar's talking about this. I'm not sure what exactly it is. I think he's telling the truth, but I also feel like I'm being lied to at the same time. This whole thing is so strange. I feel so stunned that I don't even notice the waitress has returned with our drinks until she asks for our orders. I hadn't even had the chance to look at the menu, but thankfully Oscar makes a recommendation, so we're able to get back onto this topic as quickly as possible. What about you, Lucas? I don't think you're a fisherman. Here. Okay, can we go fucking back up, please? A f Neri, what the fuck is wrong with you? What about you, Lucas? I don't think you're a freshman. Fisherman, what the hell? I haven't decided yet. The response is fast, and naturally so, even from the, you know, from the usually high-strung Lucas. It felt rehearsed. That causes Lily to frown, and it doesn't fit on her face at all. It causes me to look away, unable to handle such an expression on her. Looking over towards Lay, I catch him staring down at the table, but he lifts his head up at the sound of Lucas's reply. Seems like I'm not the only one who caught how unnatural that sounded. Mm, excuse me. What year are you? Junior. Something about what he said must have been important, because both Oscar and Lay's expressions grow curious. The latter is more confused than the former's. I thought you had to decide your major at the end of your sophomore year. It's not a question, but a fact from someone who's looked into this before. I talked it over, and they said I could wait till the end of this semester before choosing my major. And that's the end of that. Lucas leaves no way to continue that conversation. There's something about it that makes him uncomfortable, and no one wants to push. Hmm. Oh, another one with a secret. I like that. While he might still look fine to everyone else, Lucas's entire body is tense. Even if I couldn't feel the way his leg clenched up when Lily asked him the question, I think I could have figured it out just by how he looks. I got to step in and give him a hand. We don't need to push him on something this mundane. What about you, Lay? I know you're a freshman like us, but do you have any any ideas about your major? Lay looks over towards me, and it's the first time he's looked towards me this, since this conversation started. There's something in his expression that doesn't sit right. He looks almost unsure. Not because of the question, but like something's shaking, shaking him up. He's been looking like that since Lu since before Lucas answered. 
Whatever he's feeling disappears when he registers my question. That strength, as he, the strength he always has returns to his eyes as if obliterating any doubt lingering on his face. Not yet. I need to find need to find whatever gives me the best chance to support my sister and myself. Accounting's good for that. Computer science, too. There's something about their answers that causes Light's features to harden, his lips pressing hard together into a thin line. We all wait for him to reply to that, but he offers nothing. He seems to be aware that we're waiting for something because he looks away towards the door, acting as if the people wandering by are the most interesting thing he's ever seen. I want to ask more about it, but there's a small but there's a wall there now, between him and all of us. He's never done anything like this before, but I have to respect his boundaries. I don't really know what I'm going to do either. It's a weak attempt to steer the conversation away from Lay, but I hope it's enough. Me neither. Just seeing where things go. Maybe I'll find my true passion hidden somewhere. Counseling seems to be something you're good at. Lily's voice breaks with attention stronger than mine ever could. When I look towards her, her eyes aren't focused on the group, but on mine exclusively. There's an understanding between us. She's trying to help me out. Okay, guys, I'm going to save it right there. It's been another great episode. Ah, oh, man. Everyone's got these little secrets. And that makes for an intriguing game. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of Violet Memoir. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell to the next episode. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!